I love how this book is so filled with idioms. And these drawings are adorable. Uh, I thought this was interesting before I keep going. That Henry is being really nice with Sinan. Do you notice that? He's kind of got attitude for everybody else, but not for Sinan. So this is where we left off. It's a good drawing, though, Henry said, leaning over to see. I like the way you made the fur look real. Anna smiled a little. It was weird to see Henry being nice to someone. Henry looked at her and frowned. What? Do I have something in my teeth? No, you just... Do you have a little brother or something? Nope. How come? Because, Anna paused. Part of her hated to give Henry a compliment, but it was true, so... Because you seem like you'd be a really good big brother. Oh, Henry shrugged. Well, I babysit for my little neighbor, Will, a lot. He's eight, too. Henry looked at Sinan. Will's pretty cool. I don't know who's going to hang out with him when we move to Boston, though. You're moving? Yeah, when school's over. Henry blinked hard <clears throat> and pointed down the hallway. So much for Snickerbottom's big interview. Hmm, why did... This is... Just taking a pause here. Why did Henry blink hard? When, why do you blink hard? To stop something from happening? I don't think he's very happy about moving, do you? I think he's deflecting, distracting. So much for Snickerbottom's big interview, huh? Anna looked where Henry was pointing and felt all bristly inside. There was no other interview. Snickerbottom was ignoring her back at the coffee counter with his men. They were whispering and pointing towards the back of the orchestra where the Japanese drummers were warming up. Come, meet my parents, Sinan tugged at Anna's jacket sleeve and pulled her in the other direction towards a couple setting up folding chairs. Sinan spoke to them in a language Anna didn't recognize and then turned to them. Ami, Abba, meet my friends, Anna, Jose, and Henry from... He paused, from the B terminal. The woman set down a chair and smiled warmly. It is a pleasure to meet you all. Anna caught a whiff of flowery perfume when Sinan's mother leaned in and held out her hand. Her handshake was strong, like the rest of her. She looked as if she could handle a tuba or pretty much anything else. Sinan whispered something to his father, who was slightly taller and way skinnier than his mother. The man smiled and held out his hand too. I understand we have a thief in our midst. Anna's eyes got big. Who do you think stole it? Sinan's father tipped his head and laughed. Well, I don't think that's much of a mystery. It's pretty obvious who the guilty party is, isn't it? He slapped a hand on his leg and Hammurabi trotted up, his tongue hanging from his mouth, little flakes of tuna still stuck in his chin fur. Oh, the sandwich thief, Anna tried to hide her disappointment. That's okay, I wasn't hungry anyway. I'm excited to hear you play. Where do you go next? Vermont is our last stop, Sinan's mother smiled a little, but her eyes looked sad. We had hopes to stay longer in the U.S., but some of the members' visas expire at the end of the month. Can't you renew them? Anna asked. Maybe my dad could help. He's a senator. Sinan's mother shook her head. Our manager spoke with Senator Snickerbottom about it, but it hasn't worked out. She set up the last folding chair and a trumpet player filled it, warming up with crisp, smooth notes that floated up to the skylights. Sinan's mother looked around. I usually help set up the speakers. She put her hands on her hips and waved to a gangly blonde man on the other side of the strings. Guillermo, the speakers. He shook his head. Couldn't get them from baggage. Oh, he shook his head. <laughs> Couldn't get them from baggage. Actually, the senator you were talking with before warned us not to request them. Said it'd be a whole mess of paperwork and they may not make it onto the plane if we, get, if we try to get them out of the baggage area now. You're lucky to have your tuba. Another tuba, tuba player blasted a low note from the back row. All right, then. We are in a small enough space anyway. Sinan's mother squeezed between two clarinet players, passed the trumpets and trombones, and lifted her tuba as the rest of the orchestra settled in. Once they were tuned, they started playing a song full of energy and swooshes and blustering, 
like the storm that was raging outside. Anna walked to the window to watch the snow. It was falling in bigger, fatter flakes than ever as the Tycho drummers pounded out the heartbeat of the song. Anna wondered if they'd make it to Vermont in time for that concert. Nobody was going anywhere for a while. The fat lady hadn't started singing yet, and there was plenty of time to find the flag. That's the end of chapter six. All right, I hope to see a lot of comments. I know that there was great idioms. I heard some metaphors. There might have been some similes. I kind of, I'm not 100% sure. Um, you might have to play it back and listen. And um, there's definitely some questions in my mind here popping up here and there. And I'm starting to like Henry a little bit more because of his interaction with Sinan. I hope my accent is is decent too. I believe they're supposed to have kind of like an Indian type Pakistani accent. Doing the best I can. <laughs> All right, kiddos, I will see you tomorrow and uh, make sure that you're reading and getting all your work done because just because we're not actually in school doesn't mean this isn't school. It is and you've got to take it seriously. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow guys. Bye.